two of four presidents in that era were outright drunkards. So, and, oh, where did Lee surrender? Yeah, Appomattox Courthouse. How long did Jefferson Davis spend in prison? What was, how, um, what happened in his trial? There was never a trial. Who was the only Confederate who would be accused of a crime and executed? Yes, the one guy. Thank you. Henry Wirtz. Yeah, for the, and that was the Andersonville prison. But it wasn't even for insurrection. It was for, they actually literally called it a war crime. A term is going to come in the 20th century. The winner decides that. So we got this, equal rights. A couple of things that I know you had in notes. So I'm just going to film very quickly a few things to make sure we got this. What was the amendment that got rid of slavery? The 13th, the Emancipation Proclamation got rid of, that wasn't an amendment. That got rid of slaves in areas controlled by the rebellion. The 13th, every place, no slavery including areas like Maryland that kept that state in the Union. So it ratified, it was rat, it would pass the two thirds of Congress before Lincoln's inauguration. Before Lincoln's inauguration, it was really important to get, for him to get it through that Congress. Even though the next Congress would have probably ratified it, he wanted it in, con he wanted it passed in Congress before the war ended. And then it would be ratified by three quarters of the states by the end of the year. It ended slavery except for one loophole. So if you're if you're convicted of a crime, part of your punishment can be that you will be worked as a slave. Is it still like that? Absolutely. Yes. You can be worked as a slave. And there are there is prison labor, and they are paid. But do you know what they're paid? Yeah, almost nothing. Almost half of all the firefighters in California are prison laborers, and they make about two bucks an hour. Oh, and they think, oh, wow, what does that do to wages for workers who are not in prison? It drops them. So you get lower pay because of prison. Yeah. I still have a question. If you can work a job in prison like that, do you get the money right then, or does it like build up to like You get it then. But they charge you for all kinds of stuff. Huh. Oh, yeah, you're doing something. But they also are exploiting your labor. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, doing something's better than being in a cell, which is most of the time your prison, the worst part is not doing anything. But that doesn't mean they're not being taken advantage of. Oh, let me ask you a quick question. Nobody would ever just go arrest people and then sell, and then rent them off to, let's say, plantations, would they ever do that? No. No, that would never happen. They would never have quotas and go around the streets and just arrest people for standing on the street. That would never, ever happen. In fact, what is the crime of just standing there? Loitering, but that's, there's a natural crime and it was on your sheet. Did you catch that? Vagrancy. That's vagrancy. And that's a felony. Yeah. Yeah. And what the, and how do you know if someone's just standing there because they're just standing there if someone is being a vagrant? Wait, what's like the definition? Vagrant? Without any productive labor. So you're just standing there. No, it's on that the note chain. The notes, the packet. Yeah. Oh, for chapter 16. Now, what happened is this. What are you doing? So they would just go through and they would literally come up with a quota. We need 100 men. And they would go through and arrest 100 people. Ship them off. Now, mostly poor. This was usually in the South. And they would justify it by saying that these vagrants are a real, a real threat to society. They're just predetermined to commit crimes. Huh. I wonder if there's something that would justify slavery that said if they were Free. They would be savages and commit crimes. <coughs> well, what, what is that thing that said that? Positive good the positive good theory. The positive good theory is slavery. 
and the racism that came with that would be used to justify prison. Okay, so let's move on. That's where you get, it was actually the Emancipation Proclamation because the 13th Amendment was going to the states, it's associated with both of them, Juneteenth. What Juneteenth was, was June 19th in Galveston, Texas, when the U.S. Navy finally secured Texas. Now, the war was basically over, but Texas was the last place in the Confederacy to hold out. And the enslaved people there, they knew about the Emancipation Proclamation, but you know, they lived in kind of an isolated area. And they didn't know it was true. And that's when they heard, it is true, and soon it will be in the Constitution. Which, once again, only vaguely knew what it was, but that would be a massive celebration. Now, for the most part, this was pretty isolated in Texas. The white Democratic government in Texas did everything they could to kind of try to crush this, but it was a movement to remember emancipation. And it became not really an established holiday, but known. I, to be honest with you, didn't really know about it until I was in college. It just Juneteenth was not celebrated, you know, most places in the United States. But it became more and more established, and then two years ago, it became a federal holiday. Juneteenth is a federal holiday. Now, it doesn't affect schools, because we're out of school by then, but it affects, it, you know, it, it affects not all private jobs, but certainly every job involved with federal government. And one important thing about the 13th Amendment, nothing about citizenship. So nothing about rights, it was just freedom. By the way, what did enslaved people, what did they get when they were free? Nothing but their freedom. Nothing but their freedom. Which don't get me wrong, that's not a small thing. But it's definitely limited. How do you tell people who fought for the United States, yeah, thank you for your service, thank you for helping us, thank you for your sacrifice and willing to give everything, literally, for the country, but you're not a citizen. Of course, they were also saying that to women, too. All right, so one thing that came during the war was called the Freedmen's Bureau, and it was to provide education, a little bit of protection, uh, things like seeds, food, to enslaved people. Freedmen was a term given to former enslaved people. I'll sometimes call it that just because that's what I learned, but Freedmen's Bureau, it was always very limited. It was a tiny, tiny organization. Republicans at this time wanted it to be a massive organization. They got about a tenth of what they wanted. Nothing really was given, much was given. A little bit. Here's a cartoon like representing the Freedmen Bureau, separating the two groups and protecting rights. It wasn't quite like that. But Southern Democrats did everything they could to imply that the Freedmen's Bureau was giving money to people who did not deserve it. Remember the positive good theory? There were going to be two issues that came out of not enslaving people, people of African descent. They'll become savages or commit vice. Or don't forget, the thought was they're like children, they don't know how to work, and so they would just be lazy and they would starve to death. Those two things. So we're civilizing them. So they will not starve to death, they will know how to work, and they won't become savages. Now that's gone. So now they're saying the Freedmen's Bureau is giving them food, and therefore they're not working. Here are two <coughs> articles. One was a poster by the Democratic Party. One was from Leslie's Magazine. And it says from Leslie's Magazine, the popular idea of the Freedmen's Bureau, plenty to eat and nothing to do, implying they can now just sit around and play the banjo, which was an African instrument, and not work. This one is shocking. Remember those horrible caricatures, and he's just loafing, and it says the Freedmen's Bureau, the agency to keep the Negro in idleness at the expense of the white man. And that is attacking the Republican Party in 1868. And it shows just um, loafing and while white men work. So the sweat they face shall and they shall not eat thy bread. And about the white man working while black men are both. Horrifically racist. And of course, garbage. Wait a minute, you're trying to tell me slaves didn't, enslaved people didn't work? And of course they were working, but it used to discredit it. And it used that positive good theory. And so it could divide people by race. So it's, uh, by it's also the big thing is telling poor white people in the South who had nothing. You don't have much, 
and what little you have, it's going to them. It's going to them. And it really divided people. That should remind you of Bacon's Rebellion all the way through. What little you have, it's going to them now through their taxes. And so those first Freedmen's Bureau people were Northerners who went south as teachers or whatever. But also, there were some speculators who went south too. And some of Democrats would dub them carpetbaggers. And a carpetbag, literally, you take a piece of carpet, not this magical piece, but imagine a carpet that was kind of beat up. And you kind of bend it together, sew the edges, put a latch on top, cheap lunch. It's a really common cheap suitcase for people, a carpet bag. And there were some that went south to speculate, you know, they take advantage of the poverty of the south. Hey, it always happens. Wealthy people from one state will go to a relatively poor state and take advantage of like low real estate prices. Gee, I wonder if that's happened anywhere we can think of. I can't think of any state right now, but that could happen. And do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. This Okay, so this is a, a northern politician, Carl Schurz, accusing him of being a carpetbagger. And this is from a textbook in the 1960s, a U.S. history textbook. And it says, carpetbaggers is pitifully plain, use southern defeat for personal gain. It was a way to attack the Freedmen's Bureau. But carpetbaggers then would be used for years then to describe generally someone who was pretty wealthy, coming to a state and using their wealth to take power, political power in that state. That's a carpetbagger. Or somebody in this state who um, they want to discredit is not uh, representing the true values of the state. And you know, since Montana now is really becoming a state where we're going to have a, a more people this year, while more people who are born out of state than in state uh, in Montana right now, there's going to be cries of that probably in the next presidential or the next election. But back to this. So here's one of Lyndon Johnson, the Texan politician. He's being accused of being a carpetbagger in his own home state because he's supporting rights. Why is he called a socialist? <clears throat> because Lyndon Johnson would be the president who would sign the Civil Rights Act. And as we all know, only communists believe in equal rights. I will show you in the 1950s and 1960s all the bill, or not all of them, but examples of billboards that were put up saying Martin Luther King was a communist because he fought the civil rights. We'll come back. So, moving on. Presidential Reconstruction, that first one. Lincoln, so you read about this, but let me put a little thing about this. Lincoln did what's called the 10% plan. And what it was is a wartime plan in 1863. Any, if you got 10% of the population of men in that state, go up and give an oath. They swear allegiance to the country. They're back in the union. 10% pledge the oath. Now, this was a wartime plan. He did not do this because he, this was his plan after the war. Tennessee and Louisiana were mostly brought in the union. And what Lincoln wanted was some kind of government here and here for the Union so it looks like the United States is winning. It's a wartime plan. This is not his plan for after the war. But Lincoln always kept his cards close to his vest, and we don't know what his wartime plan was because he was assassinated. And so now, this is an air when this is a cartoon about Johnson trying to kind of hook the North and South together. Johnson just did the same plan. 10%. They just had to, he added a little bit. New constitution with the 13th amendment. So every state, all 11 would write a new constitution. And then, what about the rights of freedmen? Eh, you know, we, we promise, you gotta promise them rights. Did they promise them rights? Sure, why not? You'll get rights when you're ready. And I've already told you this, but eventually his plan would involve amnesty for all former Confederates. Shockingly lenient. 
No way this was Lincoln's plan. But Johnson said, I'm just following Lincoln's plan because that was his wartime plan. Republicans were furious at this. Absolutely furious. And almost immediately, I don't know why the textbook doesn't call them Dixie Crack governments. That's what everybody called them, Dixie Cracks. Dixie comes from what? Dixie, yeah, an 1860 minstrel show song called Dixie, written by a northern person. And all these ex-Confederates came in. I told you about this already. Uh, the Republicans would not see them. The Republicans were furious at them. Alexander Stevens, a former vice president of the Confederacy, literally just showed up kind of laughing that he's back. All five foot one, 110 pounds of He showed up laughing at them. And this was the old planter class. And why do I put that down there? Because the goal of Reconstruction was to destroy the planter class. Yet Johnson, who claimed to hate the planter class, is now helping them get into power. And part of the reason Johnson did it, because he wanted to show those Northern Republicans he's in charge. Which, by the way, isn't that really good to have the president decide policy based upon a personal vendetta? You know, that's always the best. Personal vendettas are the best way to run things. Oh, Dixie, minstrel shows. As I mentioned before, what they do with minstrel shows is this would be white singers. And the whole idea was, they're, they're all in the north. These weren't southern things. They were northern urban areas. And they're always about this kind of fake, weird, kind of rural life. And they're all about plantations. And the white actors would put on black books. <laughs> and mock and make fun of black people. And that is why blackface and that kind of thing was not, is so offensive to people because it was only done to make fun of people, not because of anything they did, because they are black. Or the same thing would be men would also dress up as women and really exaggerate things and make fun of women because of that. And that's one thing you gotta think about when you do your costumes. You're not dressing up as, if you're doing uh, Claire Barton, whoever's doing it, you're not dressing up as a woman or dressing up as a man, you're dressing up as the person. Yeah, that's why that is so offensive, blackface. That's what they call it. Back to this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I haven't looked at Danny DeVito today for a long time. What's general amnesty? General amnesty, uh, like a, a general parole. They couldn't be arrested for any of the crimes they did of insurrection. Which, by the way, insurrection, that's a conspiracy. If you guys get together and say, hey, let's overthrow the government, you just committed insurrection. So don't do that. And so what do they do? They pass a bunch of black codes. What's another word for black code? Yeah, they're essentially the slave codes without slavery. Every slave had to sign a work contract. Every former enslaved person had to sign a work contract. And that work contract said that this is the plantation they're supposed to be on. And they'll, they have to work there for the plantation owner. Guess who the plantation owners were? Their former masters. Almost all of them. And they would be paid by a little bit of food and a portion of the profits. Do you think these plantations ever made money? Even if they did, what did they tell the, we lost money again, we're going to get money. And if you didn't have a work contract, what happened to you? That was a felony. And you're arrested. Oh, wait, you're arrested? What can your punishment be? Huh? Back on the plantation as a slave. That's what happened. Remember the 13th Amendment? So what happened to former slaves? It was almost as bad as it was before, in a way worse. Republicans were absolutely furious, just went nuts. And they demanded 
They even passed a Civil Rights Act over Johnson's veto, and Johnson was opposed. But Southerners started saying almost immediately, almost immediately, Southern Democrats, this is a redemption of Southern rule. We are redeemed like a holy redemption. I should add, Southern Democrats, or the Democratic Party was crazy. We had this kind of working man party of the immigrants in the North, and just segregationist planters in the South. <clears throat> And that divide, the Democrats would have all the way up until you'd see it break apart with the New Deal and the Franklin Roosevelt. So, Republicans finally responded with congressional or radical reconstruction. So, every state except Tennessee, their Dixiecrat governments were thrown out. Every state. And who replaced the government? Who ran? What body of the United States government ran these 10 states? Who? Yeah, five military districts. That means Ulysses S. Grant, the commander in chief of the United States Army has taken power in the South. And he will demand, and Grant believed in reconstruction. The states had a ensure the ratification of the 13th, now the 14th, and later the 15th Amendments. They had to ratify them before the military would leave. And to assure there'll be free governments, even after they do that, the military will enroll voters. I put down black voters and enforce rights, but also poor whites too. They will enforce these until they could say that it's secure. And that would be decided by the president and the secretary of defense. Not defense, I'm sorry, Secretary of War, Long Era. The Southerners would immediately claim this is an invasion. In fact, you get this funny thing by the end of the century where you have Southerners who are saying, the North started the Civil War so they could do Reconstruction. Okay. This picture is of Reconstruction. It's implying the edifice of the country, rebuilding. You see they're, they're putting up more... Uh, columns to rebuild the country. And there's the map of the country with the eagle. And these are all the founding fathers who are helping this out. Like a, a, a spot at the top, now we have Washington and Lincoln. And then you have like, you know, there's Clay and there's Jackson, or Jefferson, I'm sorry, Jackson is right there. But do you see the one? Yeah. Uh, huh? How did the military enforce that? Yeah. It was just basically what happened is they went through and they would became like the police force. So the United States Army. Oh, I should add one thing. The army was reduced in size, so they had to recruit a few more soldiers who is in miserable conditions and will want to join the army. Former slaves. Can you see a conflict come? Yeah, so Southern Democrats feared they'd keep the army small. Who's that? John C. Calhoun. Isn't that hilarious? Him, one of the founding fathers to promote reconstruction. I just found that hilarious. So the army moved in. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why did I why am I showing a man riding an elk on the street on Higgins Avenue in Missoula? On Brooks Avenue in Missoula. Yeah, that's in Missoula. I wanted an excuse to show you this picture, so I stuck it in here. Now, let me tell you one more thing. This is the picture you never knew you wanted to see until you saw it, right? Once you see that, it's like, wow, there's a guy riding an elk in Missoula. My life is better now. Why is he? A better question is, why doesn't everybody ride elk? So, the 14th Amendment. The most important part, the Bill of Rights did not apply to the states until the 14th Amendment. So these rights that people were always talk about, the Bill of Rights and the freedom of speech cannot be infringed, and due process of the law, uh, habeas corpus, no search and seizure. No, the states didn't have to follow that until this, to citizens. And due process, equal protection under the law. States cannot deprive people of this. 
technically. This is huge. By the way, there was a civil rights bill passed in 1866 and over Johnson's veto. This is a picture from Harper's uh, and this 14th Amendment basically enshrines that into the Constitution. Also, born in the US, you're a citizen. Enslaved people are citizens. Also, we're gonna pay back that national debt. The United States government incurred a lot of bonds during the Civil War. They're not gonna allow Southern congressmen someday down the road to try not to pay that back, debt back. It's enshrined in the Constitution. It doesn't mean not pay it back, we must make regular payments. Of course, money was different then. That's a citizen. I know someone born in the United States, but did they define it in this? Kind of. It says in the amendment, citizen, persons, or men. Do you see a loophole in there? What about women? Women aren't in there. Men were citizens. Huh? No, and, and, and very specifically, it says no American Indians. And so no American Indians and only about 48% of the population are not guaranteed equal rights under the Constitution. That's not too many. That's been redressed, right? I mean, that, that's, right? Women are now guaranteed equal rights. No. Yes. <laughs> no. It has not been redressed. Women are not guaranteed equal rights. And I know what you're thinking. Well, that's only about 53% of the population. A big deal, I'm not saying. And isn't that amazingly <laughs> shocking? that the United States of America, women are not guaranteed equal rights under the US Constitution. Under the law, they are. When Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act of 64, it said no discrimination based upon sex. But that's a law, and laws can be changed. Heck, the Voting Rights Act has been overturned by the Supreme Court. So women, you do not have equal rights. So if you want to know why women make approximately 80 cents for every dollar a man makes for a comparable job with comparable experience, I've just told you why. Oh, one more thing. Was there ever an attempt? Was there ever an attempt to change that? Hey. Yes. What? You would know? You told us about it. There was a proposal called the Equal Rights Amendment that said simply no discrimination based upon sex. I mean, literally, that was the law. It got it got about so it got 35 states. It needed three more. Montana has that in the state constitution from 1971. There's no discrimination based upon sex. Montana ratified it right away. But if they proposed that again, another equal rights amendment, Montana would not ratify it. It would not have, it would not, Montana would not ratify it, even though it's in the state constitution, guarantee it. And the U.S. said and would. Senate would, hey, where you go? What is it called in the Senate? Well, 40 members of the Senate can stop any bill. Say, someone said it? Yeah, filibuster. Yeah, I think filibuster. It would not pass. Wait, if they tried to do it, Oh, not, not a chance. One political party is totally opposed to it. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there are reasons they might give you reasons they don't step on that, but uh, and that party dominates you much more. And, and maybe other people would agree. I'm not making a value judgment. And on that happy note, act like that beagle. Okay, you can see it.
You people have got to leave. I know you never want to leave this class. You are going so fast today. I was, I was like, <laughs> and my Friday brain is all foggy, so I was like, so we really going that fast? Yeah. I can never. Well, well it's normally, just how much is written on the slides. Yeah, normally you're at a good pace. So but like, it was like a couple slides. Of, <gasps> it was like 30 slides of a row. I was oh, doing it today. I, I, I was like, because I wanted to be in my rooms up really pretty. Have a good weekend. Strategic bombing. Yes. Yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you wanted that. It's really interesting. It's super cool. It's so cool. I know you I know you mean. And so kind of look at it, read through it. It's it's really good story. Yeah. Really good story. Yeah. Uh, oh, rebels and they were uh, rebels was the first uh, former slave elected to the U.S. Senate, and Bruce was one of many that were elected to Congress. Uh, Atlanta boss just with Yeah. Oh, you got it. Social media. Oh, share board. I love that. Dude, you can get that in so easy. These are just US, US. Anything. I'm 
I guess that would make it 20. Okay. Hold it up higher. Hold it up higher. I can't see it. Okay. Leave it there. The rest of the period. You can do that the rest of the period. I'll give you credit. Yeah. Oh, did you? Do you have to have a note? Yeah. Oh, Yeah. I can't. We didn't watch it, but we agreed to know from the parents on Monday, right? Yeah. Okay, half sheet of paper, number one to ten. I know I said eight, but I added two wild card questions. Yeah. Can you have a pen? I don't I don't think you're capable of that skill set. You would clearly lose it. Are these still words that were on the guide here? Yeah. There'll be two that are done. Oh, I read it. I don't remember. They were all All right, here we go. Number one. What city in northern Nebraska am I thinking of? 